but a lot more interest right now in becoming conscious about how we're living. So this is a great time to really get serious about real change. Now, this is not the first kind of experiment of this sort. Uh, people have been trying to create alternative societies for as long as there have been societies. And people have done that with religious groups. People have done that as hippies in the 60s. Uh, people have uh, had their own subcultures. Uh, the difference is that now, if we don't create a different culture, we are actually going to destroy the planet. We are in the process of doing that, and humanity will probably collapse. Now, I do have friends that disagree with me. They're very optimistic, and they think we can kind of science our way out of the problem. I disagree with that. We are in a massive growth cycle with diminishing, easy resources. So we've built up this great civilization. It's just fantastic. I love it. You know, but we cannot sustain it. So there's increasing interest when people think about how their grandchildren are going to live or how their grandchildren are going to live in getting back in tune with nature and understanding what we're doing for the long term. In addition, we have an opportunity that we've never had before. With the internet, with the ability to exchange information so easily, so cheaply, for the first time we're really saying hello to ourselves all around the world. It could be that we can get out of the traps of war, that we can get out of the traps of superstition, of needing to kill the people over the next hill. We can start to really have empathy for each other as people and solve some of these conflicts, not just in our in our with our partnerships, our intimate partnerships, not just within our families, but within our, our neighborhoods, within our cities, our countries, and the whole world. Now that may sound very optimistic, but but really if you think about it, this is the first time we've ever had this opportunity to do this. In addition, we have the opportunity to use technology in much better ways than before. Our scientific knowledge is so much better that we can live very comfortably with a lot less resources. Now we still have a huge problem. And let's not trick ourselves. Let's not think that, that you know, we can buy our way with a new gadget or something, or we can buy more stuff to save some energy. We need to radically conserve energy. We need to completely change our lifestyle as it is in the wealthy world to, to not be part of the problem. Now, there's a lot of people working to help poor people who have nothing. They don't even have electricity. They don't have basic sanitation. And I admire those efforts. I think they're great and they should continue. But the real problem is us. The real problem is the wealthy of the world. And I'm not talking about the 1%, although you might be part of the 1% worldwide. I'm talking about the massive numbers of people all over the world, in cities everywhere, who always need a new gadget, who are buying clothes before their old ones wear out, who are just constantly consuming. And when we talk about who to criticize in that, you know, I think we need to look in the mirror. It's us we have power over. It's us we can change. Let's do it now. And that's what we're doing here in the Bosque. The solutions we're using here in the Bosque is, number one, stop doing things the way that we're doing them in the industrial world. So we want to break away from almost everything. When I first started here, I didn't even have any solar panels or internet connections. So I spent two years without any electricity. That was actually very helpful to break away from the addiction to cheap energy. So now what we are doing is developing a culture where we use solar panels, a very small system, and we use almost no electricity. We can still be comfortable. We can still charge our camera batteries. We can still use laptops and get online and, and share our knowledge. But we're using almost uh, like probably two three percent of what a house in the city would use. And we can have 30 or 60 people here living quite comfortably, often in better communication with each other than if we all were walking around with tons of gadgets and video games and constant media. So the biggest solution we have here is to break away from the industrial lifestyle of consumption. After that, we've got a lot of other puzzles.